morning, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to our service this morning. Take your hymn books, turn to page 455, first and last, Faith is the Victory. Pray that you'll be with him, helping him to recover from this cold. 
and be with Belinda as well. Help her to find what her problem is and have it solved. We ask your blessing and guidance there. And we know there are many others, Father, that are laid aside, thinking of Garnet in particular this morning, that you will be near to her. May she feel your presence this day. And there are others, Father, that are in need. You know who they are, where they are, what their problems and difficulties are today. Just be with them and guide them. And then, Father, we think of our missionaries. Because of this epidemic and all that has gone on, many of them have been uh, very severely hindered in the work that they're doing as far as travel, as far as any part of their ministry. And we just pray that you will be with them today. Comfort and encourage them. Help them to trust in you and provide a way for them. Think of the Petersons in getting back to uh, their field of service. Just be with them and give them the patience that is needed. And all the others in their service for you, we pray for them. Comfort, strengthen, encourage, and guide each one. Thank you for this time. Now continue to be with us through this service. May everything, the special music, the hymns, the message be uh, that which is uplifting and encouraging to us all. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Athens. We'll go over a couple announcements this morning. Uh, today, at uh, choir practice, 1120. Uh, October 21st, prayer service here at the church at 7 o'clock. Thursday the 22nd, we'll have the adult Bible study, 1045 in the senior adult classroom. Birthdays today. Olivia, happy birthday. And on the 20th, we have uh, Roy, uh, Michael Peterson here at the church, and my son Zachary. And the 27th is uh, Deborah, one of our missionaries. And I'll let you take a look at the offering there from last week. And then uh, the ladies missionary group is planning to include inserts like the one in the bulletin today to introduce our missionary family to new members and friends here at Elton Baptist Church. Uh, I'll let you read that note there. We have a thank you here from, from Melinda. It says, Dear Elton Church family, thank you so much for your prayers, well wishes, cards, and delicious meals. I am so blessed to be a part of such a loving church family. Looking forward to being in your midst again. And it says, Love Melinda, and said, P.S., you're in my thoughts and prayers too. <clears throat> and then we have one from Adele. Dear Elton Baptist <coughs> family, uh, thank you so much for your continued support of me and my ministry to the Czech Republic. I am so grateful to you and a wonderful family here that lifts me up in prayer and makes sure I am well cared for. God bless you all richly for your investments in his work in the Czech Republic. And that's love in Christ to tell. Is there anything I missed? Yes, Dick. Yeah, we forgot our little note, but thank you for the, uh, um, what is that? What was that? Fruit basket. Fruit basket, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, it's been a, uh, one gets sick, I guess we both get sick, but uh, Sue's doing well. And thank you for the soup last night from Longview and probably Alyssa, right? Did you make it? And we had a great conversation with her last night. And um, what a, as, as Anne would eat with an E would say, what a kindred spirit. <laughs> Anyone else? Okay, this is time. Alana has a special place.
Luke chapter 18. Open your Bibles. We're going to look at the theme this morning. We can't do everything. We're going to look at uh, Blind Bartimaeus here. We've read the scripture already. I won't do that again. We'll come back to some of the verses as we go along. But we have in this passage the record of one of the Lord's gracious acts of mercy. And the key words here are, what do you want me to do for you? Let's bow in prayer. Thank you, Father, for the opportunity to open your word this morning. We know that no matter where we open, open it up to, that there's something there for us. And I pray that that will be true this morning as we look at this uh, short little passage concerning this blind man that could do nothing about his situation, but he had found somebody who could. That is true of us too. We cannot many times do what we would like to do, uh, have done to ourselves what we can't do. Help us to learn that you are God and that you can do everything and that we need to depend totally upon you. Challenge us this morning from your word, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The, this passage suggests to us this morning, as we shall see, that there are certain things that we, as human beings, cannot do. Cannot do for ourselves. Oh, we'd like to. We'd like to be independent. We'd like to solve all of our own problems. But we learn very quickly that we can't do that. Notice the personal words in this passage. The word me, the word you, and it's very down to earth and practical that this question is, what do you want me to do for you? Our Lord wanted to know what Bartimaeus wanted him to do for him. This question this morning shows how compassionate, how omnipotent uh, our Lord was and is even to this day. Here was a blind man who sat by the wayside, you remember as we read this earlier, and he was begging. He had heard that Jesus was to pass by and he cried out and asked for his help. However, we notice in the passage as we read it, that he was rebuked uh, for causing a disturbance. But he overcame this barrier and was finally brought to Jesus. Then the question was asked by Jesus, what do you want me to do for you? At this point, there was only one thing this, this man wanted, and that was his sight. Try to picture what it must have been like for him for many, many years, maybe all his life. He could not see. So that was the very first thing upon his mind. You know, oh, that I could see what was going on. Have you noticed this fall, the beauty of the leaves? We've been here seven years now, and I think this is the best that I've seen in those seven years we've been here, the, the way the leaves are. And to not be able to see that and enjoy that, what a, what a handicap that would be. So this man was in that position. He couldn't see. He, he wanted his sight back. And then we note that Jesus graciously, immediately here, complied. And then Bartimaeus followed Jesus, glorifying God, after he had received his sight. And also, the people witnessing, and I mentioned when I read the passage earlier, that the people, uh, to notice that last phrase, it says the people gave praise to God. Gave praise to God. Perhaps we tend to be less impressed with this event, because it happened over 2,000 years ago. Many times that's true with Scripture. We're not impressed as we should be because it happened so long ago. 
But we must remember that this same Lord Jesus Christ is still alive today and just as powerful. As we look around us this year, and for me at least, 2020 has not been the best year that I've ever had. But when we look around us and when we see all of this, these things with the epidemic, epidemic and with the uh, uh, presidential election, all these things that are happening today causes confusion, consternation. We're just, we're, we're troubled by all that's going on around us. But we have to remember that the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is still alive. Amen. He's still on the throne. Yeah. He knows what's going on, and he has uh, us on his mind. He will help us. He will protect us. He will guide us. Oh, we have those low moments when we wonder. And my thought has been lately, Lord, it would be an excellent time for you to come, <laughs> wouldn't it? And uh, take us from this. Now, I know some of you younger people say, well, I haven't done this yet. I haven't done that yet. Just wait a little bit longer. <laughs> But when we look at the things around us, we're ready for his return. So we have to remember that the Lord Jesus Christ is still alive. And it's possible that the Lord Jesus asked us the same question that he did blind Bartimaeus. What do you want me to do for you? Let's analyze this question and notice that it contains three propositions that I'd like you to notice. <coughs> First of all, there are certain things that we need that we cannot do for ourselves. We're looking at the spiritual aspect. There's a lot of things physically we can't do for ourselves, but especially spiritually, there are certain things that we need that, that we need that we cannot do for ourselves. And we think of blind Bartimaeus when we think of this. He was blind, and there was absolutely nothing he could do about it. He had this one tremendous need, and uh, he could do nothing to meet that need. He could not call the local eye doctor uh, and uh, get an appointment. Of course, that's a job nowadays anyways, <laughs> to call, get an appointment in any a period of time. I remember when we were down in Pennsylvania pastoring the church in Wellsboro, Pennsylvania, there was an eye doctor by the name of Dr. Gafford. And uh, I had a, I forgot now what it was, I thought it was quite serious, I needed to get in to the eye doctor, but it's one of those deals, your appointments were months ahead. However, there was a girl, a lady that worked in his office who was a Christian went to one of our fellowshipping churches in the area. And next thing I knew, I got a call back from her, and she had set an appointment for me, and I could get in. Bartimaeus didn't have that privilege. And sometimes we're in the same predicament, that we cannot, cannot solve the problem that we may have. There are certain things that we don't seem to have any control over. There are a lot of things that we can do for ourselves. We can get a good education. We can uh, be very good citizens of our country. We can set goals and we can be successful in many ways, financially, in a lot of other ways we can be successful. Uh, then we can do it by ourselves. But much more important is that we have a deep spiritual need and in it and by and of ourselves there's nothing we can do to solve that problem we can't do we can't intervene in our lives and meet the spiritual needs that we have we have to depend on someone and that someone is the same someone that blind by our minutes met the lord jesus and the answer to these needs is not in ourselves at all. Although we'd like to, 
we'd like to be able to say that we could meet that need, whatever it was, today. But we can't do it. For example, to have our sins forgiven. I cannot myself forgive my sins. I cannot forgive your sins. That's something we can't do. Or to be cleansed from the pollution of sin. Yes, even after we are believers, we sin. And we cannot resolve that ourselves and get that forgiveness and the assurance of that forgiveness. To be brought into a right relationship with God. Some today are in church and they try to do these things by themselves, thinking that coming here, sitting here, listening, that somehow or another that's going to do it. But someone else has to step in and forgive us and to straighten our lives out. And we must depend upon Him. There are many that think that by their good works they can please God. They hope that their good works will outweigh their bad ones and somehow through all of that it will please God. But that's something, something we cannot do ourselves. In Titus chapter 3 and verse 5 it says He saved us not on the basis of our deeds, which we have done in righteousness, but according to his mercy by the washing of regeneration and renewing by the Holy Spirit. We cannot do it ourselves. And uh, I'm reading from the NASB, and you'll notice a, a little difference there, but it makes it very clear here that he saved us. And that it's the renewing of the Holy Spirit within us that solves the problems uh, that we may have. And also in 1 John chapter uh, 5 and verses 1 through 5, 1 John 5, whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and whoever loves the Father loves the child born of him. By this we know, and there's many, my Bible is marked here in 1 John, you do that sometime, go through and underline or uh, highlight, uh, whoops, <laughs> highlight the uh, word know. Do that in First and Second Timothy too. There's a lot of things we can know as believers. And by this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and observe his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome or grievous. For whatever is born of God, notice that, born of God, not of ourselves, overcomes the world, and this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Who is the one who overcomes the world? But he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. We have to depend upon him to have those needs uh, met in our lives. And so, uh, for comfort, we also need a day-by-day -day victory over sin, day-by-day -day spiritual guidance that comes from Him and comfort and assurance. God's love and, and our future and our eternal destiny are not depending upon us, but upon Him. <coughs> And can we get these things, do these things ourselves? Obviously, no. We cannot do this any more than Bartimaeus could open his own blind eyes and see. So that's our first point. There are certain things that we need that we cannot do for ourselves in the spiritual realm. And this leads us to the second uh, proposition this morning, number two. There is one, the Lord Jesus Christ himself, who is able and willing to do these things that we cannot do for ourselves. There is someone that can do this, but we cannot do it ourselves. The gospel records show us that he has the ability and that he is willing 
to help those in need. He desires very much uh, also to help us as he helped blind Bartimaeus. This is illustrated in the case before us with this blind man who could not open his own eyes, could not see. And that's in our uh, passage in Luke uh, 18, 1. Or Luke uh, 1841, I'm sorry, 1841. Just want to remind you of that verse again. Jesus said, what do you want me to do for you? And then simple, sincere, from the heart, question by Bartimaeus, Lord, I want to again, I want to regain my sight. And uh, then in Philippians 4.13, it's interesting, Philippians 4 and verse 13. And here it tells us, I can do all things, but don't stop there. I can do all things. The rest of the verse says, through him who strengthens me. It's through him. We cannot do it ourselves. We must depend upon him. It is through Christ alone, not in our own strength, our own whims and desires. Have you noticed that society today, whether it's business, whether it's politics, uh, whether it's religion, so much of what is said is, you can do it yourself. You can be whatever you want to be. In the spiritual realm, that's not true. We cannot do it ourselves. We must depend upon God. Throughout the scriptures, there's all kinds of illustrations where the Lord Jesus has stepped in and helped and done what needed to be done. We cannot do, our, do it ourselves. Who else can forgive sin? It's only through Him. No one else in the world, in the whole universe, has the power and the authority to do that. He is the one whom we have offended by our sin. And he alone must be the one who forgives us. The problem today often is that people are not willing to admit, first of all, that they're sinners. Someone has said, somewhere along the line, I've read it or heard it, that you have to be lost before you can be saved. You have to realize that you have that need before you can come to Christ and have that need met. You cannot do it by yourself. You must realize that you need something. And uh, as Christians, we must admit uh, our sin and confess that sin to be constantly in a right relationship with God. We have to realize that when we come to Christ and are saved, that doesn't solve the whole problem. We're still sinners saved by grace. We still sin. The Bible says the thought of foolishness is sin. Who can say this morning and that we at least have not thought foolishly in so many areas? And then we have to apply. 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, He, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It is through Him that we receive forgiveness. No one else can restore peace with God or give us peace in our hearts. And certainly, in this day and age, we need that peace, don't we? There's so much fear going around, you know, that's why we wear these masks and all these things. There's so much fear about this. But He alone can give us peace, even in the midst of a time like this. Who else can bring us comfort when we are in trouble? No one else. We can't do it ourselves. We have to depend on Him. Who else can give us assurance concerning life and the life to come? And be assured that he has not forgotten us. 
I remember my mother, when she got to be well into her 90s, she said to me one day, I think God's forgotten me. <laughs> but he hasn't. There came a day, two days before she turned 96, that the Lord remembered her. But the, the Lord has not forgotten us. And we need to depend on him, even through these difficult times. It's hard. We see so much around us, but he is there to help us. And no one else can do it. And he can give us assurance concerning this life and the life to come. We must have confidence in him and in his word to see that these things are resolved in us, in our hearts, and in our lives. We can't do everything, but we know one who can, and we must, we must rely upon him and depend upon him to do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. The third proposition this morning, there must be a willingness on our part, <clears throat> excuse me, to receive what the Lord offers and is willing to give us. That's often the problem. We know it's out there, but because of pride, because of whatever, we're not willing to receive what he has for us. He's able and willing to help us, but we must receive it. And here's the catch, by faith, by faith. We can't see everything that we need. We can't see uh, everything that uh, our hearts yawn, uh, yearn for and need. But it's by faith that we receive them. We can't tell when God is going to intervene and stop this nonsense going on in our world today. But we have faith that he will. And note again in our text in verses 41 to 43 concerning blind Bartimaeus. What, can, or what do you want me to do for you? Verse 41. Then he replied, Lord, I want to re regain my sight. And Jesus said to him, Receive your sight. Your faith has made you well. Your faith has made you well. It's faith in what God can do for us that we can't do for ourselves. Immediately, verse 43, he regained his sight and began following him, glorifying God. And when all the people saw it, they gave praise to God. And that's the one we give praise and thanksgiving for because of what he's done for us. So, this morning, what do you need? What do I need? this morning? Have we asked him to meet that need? Are we willing by faith to receive that which we ask for? Here are some examples of our possible needs. First and foremost, do we need forgiveness? Do we need forgiveness? Then we must confess our sin and ask him for that forgiveness. What will be his answer? We see that in Matthew. In Matthew chapter uh, 9, verse 2. Matthew 9, 2. And they brought to him a paralytic lying on a bed. Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralytic, Take courage, son, your sins are forgiven. We go to him, the only one that can forgive sins. We put our trust in him. So if you need forgiveness of sin, you've never trusted Christ, you need that. Or as believers, like I said, we're only sinners saved by grace. We need forgiveness and we must turn to him for that forgiveness. Do we need cleansing? Goes along with that, cleansing from our sin. Then we need to ask him for it. In uh, Mark, the Gospel of Mark, chapter one, verses 40 and 41. And a leper came to Jesus beseeching him and falling on his knees before him and saying, Notice this phrase now, if you are willing, 
you can make me clean. Moved with compassion, Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him and said, I am willing, be cleansed. He's saying that same thing to us today. We need cleansing. He says, I'm willing, are you willing? Be cleansed. He's the only one that can do that. Do we need peace? Certainly, in this time of our lives, in the situation in our world today, yes, we need peace. We need peace above all other things. And in uh, John chapter 14 and verse 27, John 14 and verse 27, here we read, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives to you do I give to you. Do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. Maybe we ought to underline that verse, maybe we ought to take that home with us. <clears throat> as we think of it today in our world situation. Jesus is saying, these are his words, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives, give I to you. There's all kinds of promises that the world gives us. It doesn't bring us the peace he's talking about. Do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. Difficult in this time that we live in, but I think we need to take heed to that. Do we need victory over sin? The answer that he gives us we find in the Gospel of John also in chapter 8 and verses 10 and 11. John 8, 10 and 11. This is the story of the adulterous woman to get the context of this. And straightening up, Jesus said to her, verse 10, Woman, where are they? Did no one condemn you? She said, No one, Lord. And Jesus said, I do not condemn you either. Go, from now on, sin no more. So if we need victory, he's there to help us. He says, Go on, sin no more. There's some choices we need to make in life. And many of them have to do with Sinning or not sinning. Do we need guidance in the big and also the very day decision of, of life, the everyday decisions of life, the little ones, the big ones? We need to know his guidance. We need to ask him for the answer, and he will give it to us. We studied this in our Bible study, or no, I guess it was in our in the prayer meeting, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Also, we learn from Psalm 32. I'd like you to notice that this morning. Uh, Psalm 32 and um, verses 8 and 9. Psalm 32, verses 8 and 9. It says here, I will instruct you and teach you in the way which you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Do not be as the horse or as the mule, which have no understanding, whose trappings include bit and bridle to hold them in check. Otherwise, they will not come near to you. So he asks us, the trust in him and he asks we ask him for guidance and he will direct us in every area of our lives and our needs do we need comfort from the loss of loved ones from illness from family problems then we ask him and he will answer he will guide us he will teach us uh, no matter what the the need is and it says in uh, Matthew 14, it tells us here in uh, verses 22 to 27. I'd like to take time to read those in Matthew 14, 22 to 27. And we'll be finished here in a moment. Matthew 14, 
22 to 27. That immediately, this is when he walked on the water, he made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side while he sent the crowds away. We're asking for comfort here. After he had sent the crowds away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. And when it was evening, he was there alone. But the boat was already a long distance from the land, battered by the waves where the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Take courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. So in your mind, as you think about the needs of our day, the needs of your own life, the needs of your own family, your own situation, remember these words of Jesus. Take courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. So he, he will guide us. He will bring comfort to us. And if we need assurance, there are all kinds of places in the scripture. Assurance of salvation. Presence, uh, in, in, uh, assurance of his presence with us and, and of our future. And then he will guide us and direct us and give us the answer that we look for. So in conclusion this morning, the Lord Jesus waits to meet our needs, and he's willing to do so. But we must come to him and tell him our need, and by faith receive that, realizing that we cannot meet that need. We must trust in him. Every blessing comes from him. And there are all kinds of scriptures that help us and encourage us in this. I encourage you to read Ephesians good book, especially the first chapter, to get that encouragement. And Philippians also. Ask him, and he will guide us, and he will teach us. So, will we come to him with our need today? Or will we keep struggling to meet that need ourselves? Will we receive what he offers? This is often the case. He offers us all this and we fail to uh, apply it, to receive it. And then we offer praise when it is received, as they did here with blind Bartimaeus. So let's remember those three things as we think of this man who needed his sight and could not restore it by himself. There are certain things we need that we cannot do for ourselves. There is one, the Lord Jesus Christ, who is able and willing to meet those needs that we cannot meet ourselves. And then finally, there must be a willingness on our part to receive what the Lord offers and is willing to give us if we are willing to let him and to trust him. Thank you, Father, for this day. Thank you for the assurance we can find in your word. Thank you that in the midst of what's going on in the world around us, yes, we can have peace. Yes, we can have victory over the world. But we must realize it doesn't come from within us. We must depend upon you. Even as so many illustrations in your word provide that assurance that you can meet that need. Challenge our hearts, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Page 33, my faith looks up to thee, we'll sing the first and the last.
Let's bow in prayer. Thank you, Father, for this day. Thank you for the music. Thank you for the fellowship. Thank you for your word. Dismiss us now with your blessing. Go with us to our homes. Guide us through the day. Guide us through the coming week. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You are dismissed. Thank you.